Hello again, everybody. I wanted to make a quick video here on something that a lot of my customers are facing, and that deals with radius authentication um, with multiple domains. So in environments, um, common environments, you're going to have several domains, even forests, and MPS is reliant on a lot of things for authentication to happen uh, to these other forests. And um, sometimes it's just very difficult to get all those things in place, or maybe there's simply not trusts in place for all of this to happen. So an easy way around that is to actually route the radius requests to the appropriate uh, domain directly where a radius server lit an MPS server exists in that domain allowing for authentication to happen. The trick is how do you actually route those packets, those requests to another NPS server? Um, many times the like a VPN device doesn't have complicated rules. It simply has a place where you can send a request to. So there's a way you can use NPS um, to proxy those requests to other uh, MPS servers through the creation of uh, rules inside the uh, connection request policy. So let's take a quick look at what I've got here. So the first thing that we want to do is create remote radius server groups for where we're going to route stuff to. And inside these groups, we've got other radius servers with all the typical stuff in there. You're going to have shared secrets and you're going to have the timeouts set. Make sure these timeouts are long enough for authentication to happen. If you're looking at MFA, you're looking at a bare minimum of 30 seconds. And really, in a production environment, you're really going to want this more uh, like 60 seconds. So these are where we're sending request to. Now let's look at the policies that I have in place. So if I get a request for a user whose username either starts with domain a backslash or ends with at domain a.com, then it will match this rule. So the, there's some regex that's going on here. Um, so the first thing is there's this upward caret, that's regex for begins with. Then we have domain a backslash, and in regex, the way you get out of a slash is you add another slash. So what you've got here is up caret, which is the symbol above the number six, domain a slash slash. And so that would match domain a backslash. There's another symbol here, the pipe symbol, that's a logical or. And then the next one is at domain a.com dollar sign. The dollar sign means ends with. So what we're saying is if it starts with domain a backslash or it ends with domain a.com, then it would match this rule. And so if I match this rule, what I'm doing is I'm going to proxy those requests to the group that I set up called domain A. And I have the same thing for domain B. Exactly the same rules, just writing them somewhere else. So let's see how this works. Let's watch our Wireshark. So this is the I'll call this the NPS proxy. In this case, this NPS server um, will authenticate for my uh, domain. Uh, AHARES.com is in my lab here. And so when I send a request for NateHarris.com, it will get the request and it will accept it. Uh, because the credentials match, the shared secret matches, et cetera, et cetera. 
we see a request, we see an accept. This MPS server does not have the MFA extension on there, so we're not doing MFA. This is purely primary authentication and how to route those requests. After you get this set up and working, you can add the MFA extension and you can perform MFA with these requests as well. But this is to work out how do we route the requests. So now let me change this. I'm going to change this uh, to at domain a.com. Let's see what happens. So here we see the request come in. It's going to match our connection request policy. It, that is going to generate another access request from this server to my proxying server, to my, uh, I'm gonna proxy that request to the next server in line. Uh, domain A doesn't actually exist. So that server says, no, nope, I'm rejecting that. And then we get the reject and we forward that reject on. So you can see the proxying behavior that's going on. It duplicates, obviously, all those requests. And we're going to do the same thing for B. We should see the same behavior. All right, and we do. We see all the same behavior here. So I just wanted to make a very quick video here because this is something that is asked about uh, frequently because people have multiple domains in their environment. And there's not really a lot of information on how to simply set up these uh, routing rules, if you will, radius routing rules for these requests. Um, actually, before I finish, I want to I do want to show um, that the rules work as promised. Domain A backslash send. All right. Domain B backslash. So you see the, the condition that we have set up matches either uh, format. Now, if I don't send a qualified username, then what happens when it reaches this main MPS server, the MPS server doesn't see a domain and it's going to make an assumption. It's going to assume that that user is in its own domain. And in my own domain, it is nateharris.com. It prepends some guy uh, with Nate Harris uh, backslash and sends that to its own DC and processes the request. So for this form of routing to work, you do have to qualify the username. There's no way around that. It has to happen. Now, if you're interested, there is additional capabilities. Um, it's beyond the scope of what I wanted to perform in our show in this video, but we do have the capability down here in Roam translation rules where we could, in theory, say, okay, if a username comes in as, uh, well, let's just say some guy, and I'm going to replace that with domain A backslash some guy. I'm not actually sure if that's the right syntax, but we'll give this a shot. And which condition is that? Oh, it's not actually the condition I want. So doing this on the fly here. So let me go down to an enabled one. Uh, I won't match that, won't match that, but it will match this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and create a Roam translation rule for a username and say if the user comes in as some guy, I'm going to replace some guy with domain A backslash uh, some guy. I'm curious if that's actually going to process it because it's not actually a proxying rule. I don't think it will. I think that this will simply fail because it will it will match this connection request policy, which is set to authenticate local. So that will fail. So, but I'll just show you uh, what happens in a rel translation rule. 
kind of outside the scope of what I want to do here, but that's fine. Uh, let's go back here. Let's uh, restart Wireshark. And let's send a request some guy. Yeah, so this rejects. And the re reason that it rejects, uh, <clears throat> we need to look at the event log to actually see it. Uh, you can see it, it changed the user to domain A, some guy. Um, so really, the way to do this is actually the way I was doing it before. You go in here, you remove the realm translation rule that I created. Remove. Now let me go up here to domain A. And I guess what I can say here in domain A is if I find, I guess if you know a user who doesn't want to actually have to type in backslash, let's say he's a VIP and he's special. You've all got some of this, right? Then when some guy sends his request in, it will translate it to domain A some guy. And let's go watch our traffic here. Send it again. Uh, oh, no, it won't do it because it matched the wrong connection request. Well, is there really the only way I actually could do it? Now that I think about it. I go in here. I'm going to go to my conditions. I'm going to go to username. I'm going to add another or. The pipe symbol. I'm going to say some guy. Um, and the way to do that is to match it exactly. You start with that and you finish with that. So it matches exactly some guy, not some guys, for example. Then say OK. Then OK. Let's go back here. Let's restart this guy. Let's see if this works. Yeah. Okay, so now I am translating the request. Let's go here and add a new column so we can see the username and the column. Over here we're gonna say radius dot user. Name. Why is that not matching? Radius dot user by underscore name. Drag this above info. Now we can see what happened. Came in as some guy, left his domain A, some guy. So we matched on our uh, connection request policy. Come on, work with me here. We matched on our, our connection request policy here. And we also did, we also did some realm translation in that as well. So hopefully this bit of rambling that I've done, um, you find some use in it. Um, and um, this matches your need. I wanted to, I'm thinking out, I'm thinking as I'm talking here, I also wanted to show this. So if you see the request that came in, we see username and password. Here we've added the proxy state, so we know that this request has been proxied. Um, so hopefully you found some use in this. If so, let me know. It'd be great. I appreciate the feedback. Um, and I'll try and ramble less next time. Have a good day.